It's rivalry week in the SEC and around the country. This week, I'm bringing you a four-course Thanksgiving podcast feast. If you missed the first course, it was our deviled egg bowl. Stop what you're doing right now. Go check that one out. This is our second course. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at SEC Recap. As always, you can get all of our content at secrecap.com. Like, subscribe to the podcast. If you're listening on YouTube, please like and sub to the channel. It helps us grow the show. This is the Battle Line Rivalry. Not the coolest name, not the co- m- most original name. This is the second of four SEC Rivalry pods we're bringing you this Thanksgiving week. If you missed the first course, like I said, go wet your appetite with a nice, delicious deviled egg bowl pod, and I will keep this episode piping hot for you to enjoy when you get back. This is the second course. This is our soup course, perhaps. And in a lot of ways, this game is kind of like soup. It's really a Black Friday battle line rivalry. The Arkansas Razorbacks head to Columbia, Missouri, Como, to face the Missouri Tigers. This game kicks off on Black Friday at 2.30 p.m. Central Time on CBS. The Black Friday battle line rivalry. You might remember the, the days of Black Friday old when you would get up early to go camp out in front of a yeah, you know, Best Buy or Walmart. And then three terrified 16-year-olds would unlock the doors at 5 a.m. And an all-out medieval melee would ensue over who wins the right to claim the Sanyo 40-inch 720p LCD television. Well, instead of fighting over discount Asian electronics, these two teams will be Black Friday battling for discount scrap of metal known as the Battle Line Trophy. I mean, this thing is big, like half the size of a human person big, because when your trophy is pretty much a meaningless hunk of scrap metal, you make it extremely large so that it appears to have value. Now, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. This worthless hunk of steel is actually plated in silver and weighs about 180 pounds. and It's still a bit of a reach for a trophy title. If you want to check out a picture of this thing, go to my website, secrecap.com slash articles. I've got pictures in here of these players holding it up. It's massive. First of all, many teams' rivals share a border, so calling it the battle line rivalry is pretty unimaginative. Secondly, Fayetteville is the only town of the two that is even close to the said battle line. Columbia is smack in the middle of Missouri. It's about 300 miles, like a five-hour drive from Fayetteville. It's hardly what I'd call a battle line town. I mean, if Mizzou were in Branson or Springfield, I might concede that view. Now, I called this pod the soup course because this game is a lot like soup. It's not the most exciting thing you're going to eat, but it's familiar and it's comforting. You know that you're going to get to eat something more substantial after it, and you're looking forward to what that's going to be. After all, I love soup. A nice baked potato with bits of bacon and cheddar cheese and chives on the top. Come on. I mean, it's soup season. I love a good bowl of soup. Well, this will be just the 14th bowl of soup between these two teams, but they first met in 1906 when Arkansas was the Arkansas Cardinals. They didn't meet again until 1944 when the Arkansas, now Razorbacks, beat the Tigers 7-6. Meetings were sparse until 2014. Mizzou's first year in the SEC. The Battle Line Trophy was introduced in 2015 when Missouri became Arkansas's annual cross-division draw, and Arkansas took that home after a 28-3 victory. So let's dive into the stats. Arkansas, number 49 scoring offense in the country. They average 31 points per game and 465 yards a game. Not a great passing attack, number 66 in the country, 232 yards a game, but a superb rushing attack, number eight ground game in the country, 223 yards a game, 21 rushing tutties. Just five interceptions on the year, that's pretty good, and nine out of 
18 fumbles lost. Missouri, number 86 scoring offense in the country, averaging just 25 points per game, but on 485 yards a game. Got to do a little bit better than that on almost 500 yards a game, in my opinion. Number 98 passing offense. Like I said, not a strong passing attack, just 209 yards a game, 11 passing touchdowns, and the number 66 ground game, just 152 yards on the ground, 18 rushing tutties on the year. Nine interceptions and lost 10 out of 12 fumbles. So I'm giving the offensive advantage here to Arkansas for that absolute smash, smash mouth ground game. Flipping on over to the defensive side. Arkansas, the number 93 scoring defense in the country. Not a good defense. They're averaging 28 points allowed and giving up 450 yards a game. They've got a really bad passing defense, number 118 in the country. They're giving up 280 yards and they've given up 17 passing tutties. They also have the number 97 rushing defense, allowing 175 yards and 22 rushing touchdowns on the year. They've got six picks and six fumbles. Mizzou, a little bit better defensively, but not what I'd call a uh, a really above average defense. It's number 54 in the country. So really middle of the road there in terms of scoring defense. They're averaging 22.4 points allowed and giving up 337 yards a game. They do have the number 45 pass defense and the number 36 run defense. So they're a little stouter there in the middle of the field than Arkansas. They've given up 13 passing touchdowns and 16 rushing touchdowns. So I'm giving the advantage defensively here very clearly to Missouri. So offensive advantage, Arkansas, defensive advantage, Missouri. Ooh, I love that. Love that for a nice little rivalry game. Strength complements weakness. All right, key injuries, not a lot here. As I said on the Egg Bowl pod, I'm recording all of these really early in the week, so there's not a lot of injury information uh, that, it's, that is out there and fully up to date. But what we do know is that Sam Pittman said that linebacker bumper pool, leader on that defense, leader on that team, might be done for the season with a hip injury. So I'm listing him here as doubtful. I don't have any injury information from Missouri at this point. So I'll skip on ahead to key players. For Arkansas, quarterback KJ Jefferson, as always, he opens up that, that ground game with my second key player for Arkansas, Rocket Sanders. He's just six yards behind Quinshawn Judkins as the second leading rusher in the conference with 1,379 yards. So I don't even consider him the second best rusher in the conference. It, him and Quinshawn Judkins are really like a 1A, 1B. I mean, they're both so freaking good. And then I'm going to list Chris Paul Jr., who may be stepping in for bumper pool. They'll need him to really help control uh, that run defense in the middle of the field there. Bumper pool was, you know, a team leader in like sacks and tackles. So they're going to need somebody big to step in for him. For Missouri, quarterback Brady Cook, he's really started to show off a lot of his athleticism, especially with his legs. And they're getting uh, Dominic Lovett and Luther Burden more involved in some design, end around, jet sweep type action. So if Brady Cook, Love It, and Burden can really get something going through the air, I think it opens it up more for maybe a Cody Schrader uh, to pick up some key downs with his legs there for the Missouri run game. So what this game comes down to for me is Arkansas leads the league in sacks and sack yards. But Missouri is near the top in both categories as well. And that might be surprising because statistically by yards given up and points allowed, Arkansas is not a great defense. But they do have a really good pass rush. League leader in sacks and sack yards. Mizzou is top three or four as well. Arkansas has the better ground attack. And while Missouri's defense is Missouri's defense is good at keeping things inside for the most part. I think Arkansas's ground game is good enough to account for that. Brady Cook has shown spurts of athleticism. If Arkansas's weak pass defense starts sitting back too much, Cook could take advantage and pick up some key downs with his legs. A look at the betting odds. ESPN's FPI has Arkansas favored at a 55.9% chance to win versus Missouri at a 44.1% chance to win. So FPI has this as a pretty close matchup. 
Vegas thinks so as well. Arkansas minus three, and the money line is minus 165. The over-under is 56 at the time I'm recording this, with team totals for Arkansas at 30 and Missouri at 27. Both teams are six and five against the spread. I lean Arkansas outright, and I think I'm going to lean Arkansas to cover as well. Final prediction. Last week, I thought Arkansas was running out of steam. And boy, man, they proved me wrong. <laughs> they, they proved me way wrong. They split Ole Miss wide open in a lopsided win. Missouri's defense is better than Ole Miss's. But it's not that good. I think if this game were in Fayetteville, Arkansas is at least a seven-point favorite. So I think taking home that big silver-plated hunk of scrap metal, give me the hogs, 30, Missouri, 27. Before I give you the rest of my week 13 predictions, don't forget to check out our merch, bonfire.com slash store slash SEC recap. I've got awesome SEC pride merch for each SEC team. Again, you could get all our content on secrecap.com, but wait, I still got to give you the rest of my week 13 predictions. These are all the games that I am not recording a podcast exclusively for this week. First up, Florida at Florida State. I think Florida Florida State is objectively a better team, and they do get the Gators at home. So give me FSU 31 to 24, but maybe Florida covers that nine and a half point spread. Next, we got Georgia Tech at Georgia. This game should be a blowout. I don't know if Georgia covers the spread. It's a huge spread, 36 points, but I think they could cover that. And I think 42 to 7 sounds about right to me. Then we've got South Carolina at Clemson. Hear me out here. And I'm not going to go into detail. The Tennessee game was a fluke. Just like Georgia in 2019. It happens. Freakishly, it happens. It doesn't mean that South Carolina has suddenly put it all together. I'm not buying that. I think Tennessee gave them as much as they took in this game. I think Clemson, much better defense. They win by a couple scores and maybe even keep the Gamecocks under 20 points. Give me Clemson 33, South Carolina 17. Next up, we got Louisville traveling to Lexington to face Kentucky for their interstate rivalry. Kentucky has turned just awful in the back half of the season. Louisville isn't very good. I think this game will be ugly and close, but it is in Lexington, so I'm still going to take the Wildcats, maybe by a field goal. Ugly, low-scoring affair, 20-17 to 17, Kentucky. Final game on this lineup, I've got LSU at Texas A&M. Now, you might be asking, well, hey, this is an SEC-SEC matchup. Why didn't you do a podcast for this one? There's not a really deep, rich SEC rivalry here. A&M came into the SEC uh, with Missouri, you know, back in 2013, 2014. I know these two teams have played since the, you know, early 1900s across conference and out of conference. But there's just there's not really a compelling rivalry between these two teams, in my personal opinion. Uh, so to me, this could just shape up to be a decent, worthwhile SEC game. So LSU has to go to College Station, but they're such a more complete team than Texas A&M. There's not even a chance for A&M to get bowl eligible here. They only have four wins on the season. And LSU is playing now for the college football playoff. I'm not saying it won't be the game, but LSU should win by at least 10. Give me LSU 27, Texas A&M 17. That's going to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed this content, follow us on Twitter at SEC Recap. Get all of our content at secrecap.com. Like, subscribe to the podcast. We're available everywhere you prefer to chug your podcast. If you're listening on YouTube, like, subscribe to the channel. It helps us reach more SEC fans. Guys, have a great Thanksgiving week. 
Enjoy the rest of our SEC rivalry episodes. And I hope all of you have a great week of food, friends, family, and football. Thanks for listening to the SEC Recap Podcast.